What's up YouTube? Did you hear that DaVinci Resolve just launched on iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and we're over here at the desk today so that we can take a look at DaVinci Resolve for iPad, which just dropped last night. So I've been waiting and waiting since Apple announced that DaVinci Resolve would be coming to iPad during their new iPad release. And there have been a lot of people on YouTube who've been able to get their hands on the beta. I was not one of them, so I've been eagerly awaiting the public release. Now, something that we learned a little bit ago was that it was going to work on some of even the older iPads, which I was very happy about. This here is an iPad Pro with the A12Z processor in it. That's the 2018 iPad Pro. And that's what we're going to look at this on today because I don't have one with the M1 or the M2 because until DaVinci Resolve came out, there really wasn't even a reason for it. So we're going to see how it works on the A12Z. Most people have been testing it on M1 and M2 iPads. So this will be kind of an interesting thing. This is the first time I've looked at it. So we're going to be seeing it for the first time together. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so I'm going to launch it here. Again, this is the first time and we're going to see what happens. Okay, so it comes up, it says DaVinci Resolve 18. So they're not even calling it like DaVinci Resolve iPad or anything like that. They're calling it DaVinci Resolve 18 as though it is the full version. Now, of course, we know that there's only going to be two tabs, but it's going to be the full version of those tabs in theory. Okay, so DaVinci Resolve would like to use Bluetooth. Okay, so if you want to be able to use this with a Bluetooth keyboard or especially with the speed editor, you wouldn't want to enable this. I don't have either of those right now, but I might want to in the future. So I'll go ahead and just click OK on that. Okay, now here's uh, the splash screen, the notice. Again, this is the first time I've seen anything here. So you're seeing it along with me. This version of DaVinci Resolve comes packed with advanced editing and color finishing tools. However, some features will be missing from this iPad module due to memory limitations. Okay, so that is probably due to this being an A12Z, which I think those came in with four gigabytes of memory. So it's a lot less than one of the M series processors. Maybe it was six, I can't remember. Okay, video processing was restricted to HD and some of the effects and processing tools are disabled or have limited functionality. It makes sense that that would be the case. So to have full access to all DaVinci Resolve for iPad features, we recommend you use an Apple iPad Pro M1 or newer models. Okay, so that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on Don't Show This Again because I know and understand that. That's all I need. So we're going to click OK. So we immediately have ended up in the cut page in a new project. So we didn't have to make a new project or anything. So I'm not quite sure what project management is going to look like on this. And we're here in the cut page. Now, I just want to say the cut page is not like my really familiar area. In preparation for this coming out, I started using the cut page for the first time and I'm still getting very used to it. I'm not fast at it yet, like I am on the edit page. So we're going to try and figure this out a little bit together here. Again, I did start using it on the Mac just to kind of get a vibe for it, but I'm not really familiar with it. We can switch to color though, and color looks to be normal. Now I've already seen people using this in the beta reviews, and it looks like it's really basically full featured. Everything is here that you would normally see and use. Now, of course, we're going to need to bring in some footage for this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hook up my external drive so that we can see how that works. Okay, let's go ahead and let's see if we can import some media here. So I'm just going to click import media. Let's jump down to my one terabyte drive. We're going to go into probably a vlog video because I need to work on one of these vlogs for the Yellow Van Travels account. And that's the Montana Glacier vlog. And it looks like I can't import a folder. I need to actually import the individual files. So let's go grab the Osmo pocket footage. Select all, open. Let's see what that does. I would have liked to have just brought in the folder, but there's probably a way to do that. Again, this is my first time looking at it. We're just going to pull something in here, see what we can do as far as cutting up and throwing a little bit of color correction on there. We're not going to do anything fancy today. Okay, so I can use my finger or I can use the mouse. The mouse will scroll a little bit faster. Looks like I've been sorted by file type by default, list options, and oh no, it's sorting by time code. Interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and just sort by clip name because that will put them in order of how the Osmo recorded them. Okay, we're just going to pull in some of this footage, but let's take a look at it first. Double tap it to put it up in the media viewer. We only have one viewer, but that's normal for the cut page. And really, I pretty much edit with just one viewer anyway, so that's true most of the time. So with that, let's see, and, and they might make some noise here as I play through this, um, but this is a time lapse, so there is no noise with it. And I don't know if my iPad speakers are turned on. Okay, so I can play through it, 
and figure out maybe where I want to start. Let's just try some keyboard shortcuts in and out. And let's just drag that down onto the timeline. Again, this is the cut timeline, not the edit one. So if it looks a little bit different than what you're used to, that's why. A lot of us got very used to working in the edit page and that hasn't come as of now to DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. I don't know if it ever will. I said early on when the cut page first came out that it felt kind of like it was aimed towards smaller screens and maybe less power hungry than the edit page. And I'm not surprised that that's what came to the iPad because it kind of felt like that was where they were going with it. Now I can't scroll through it here because this is the locked playhead. So let me unlock the playhead here to the free playhead and then I can scroll. Okay, I wish that I could just scroll on the timeline. I think that's because I'm used to LumaFusion. With the mouse, I can do it, um, but with my finger, it doesn't work. Let's see if it does anything different with the Apple Pencil. No, it just wants to select it. Okay, so we've got that. Um, let's see what happens when we want to trim. Yep, so just putting my finger right there will let me trim right over the top of it. Easy peasy. Um, let's see when we want to cut. If I were going to cut, I would just hit Command B for blade. And yeah, cut. Let's try and drop in another clip here. And I can just drop that in between. Not that that's what I would actually normally do, but for right now, I feel like using the mouse is better. But of course, that's how I'm used to with DaVinci Resolve is using a mouse, not a touch interface. But that seems to make more intuitive sense to me. You can just click to bring the playhead in. Okay, let's try and color this just a little bit because it looks like cutting and trimming is fine. Okay, let's just hop over to color. We're just doing a quick look at this. We want to go ahead and add a splitter combiner node to this. Okay, so where are all the nodes? Okay, so there's a few things here, but I don't see where you can actually set your node type. So normally if I were going to level out the colors in this, I would do so with a splitter combiner node. I may just try to do a little bit of work with the serial node here. So I've got the scopes here. Again, I'm not going to go into everything that might happen while you're coloring here. We're just going to test it out a little bit. So let's go ahead and see if we can bump our highlights up and then let's drop our shadows. We get our full Dynamic range here, check the before and the after. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's add another serial and then let's try to just apply a grade with the curves here just a little. I'm going to try and make this a little bit dramatic just so that you guys can see it a little bit better. I'm just applying an S curve here and I'll just bring up my darks just a little bit just to give it a fade there, bring down my highlights. I'm using my finger for this. I could also use the mouse. That might actually be better. I might be a little bit more comfortable with that. Yeah, this is a pretty dramatic grade, but hopefully that helps you to see it a little bit better. Let's go into the reds here and we'll see if we can't put a little red in the shadows and let's see what our blue does here. Oops. Gotta be careful because you can actually click on the different lines from here. Okay, so that's a little bit of grade, not necessarily a great one, but that was easy. Let's see what playback's like with that. See if we have any trouble. This is not difficult footage. Um, it's fairly easy stuff out of the Osmo Pocket, but it, the A12Z appears to be handling it just fine. Now I haven't done any effects or anything yet, so there's still a lot to test out here. The last thing I, I want to test out, just kind of as part of my normal test here, is just the titles. Let's see if we can add a title and what we can do with it. There are actually fusion titles here, even though we have no fusion tab. So we do have uh, fusion titles that we could bring in if we wanted to. So let's go ahead and try one of those and just see how the A12Z handles that. So if we want to edit that, we're going to open up the inspector. This is the first time we've opened up the inspector today. So let's try this and we're just going to put Montana down here. Again, this is not a really hard title, but a lot of times I'm not doing anything super difficult. 
Let's just see. Okay, well, it is glitching a little bit there right at the beginning. So let's just see. There, now it's playing smooth. Let's just try trimming that title back a little bit so that it sticks here with that. Oh. Still a little tricky to get used to this. Um, and then let's try and adjust its placement here. So I need to transform it. Let's see, here's my position. There we go. So I'm going to put this up in the top towards that darker blue where I think it will show up better. Okay, easy peasy. So adding footage, cutting footage, trimming footage, adding a grade, adding a title, pretty much the basics of it, right? We could try and add in an effect here. That is probably what's going to bring it down. Let's try and add that to this clip over here. So let's go ahead and let's select this clip and let's try to apply a box blur to it. Box blur applied. Now if I go to my inspector, I have effects. Here's the box blur. And I should be able to keyframe this. So let's go ahead and let's set our strength here to that. Let's scroll back and we'll set our strength to zero. So this block blur appears. Play through it. There we go. Blur seems to be no problem on there. And we can keyframe it without any kind of an issue. The inspector seems to have everything that we would expect from it in here. I am really excited about DaVinci Resolve coming to the iPad. As you've heard me say before, this is what's really going to make the iPad a pro machine, is having pro apps on it. And so with the arrival of Affinity Publisher and DaVinci Resolve on the iPad this year and just in the last month, really, that has just skyrocketed the amount of things that I as a creative can do here on the iPad. So it's a very Merry Christmas present to me from both Affinity and DaVinci to be able to have this. And of course, DaVinci Resolve is free um, for the non-studio version. The studio version on iPad is going to cost $95, so you can upgrade to that. But I doubt most of you will run into a problem unless you are working for a studio that you're going to need the studio version for. There's some really nice features in the studio version. It's not something that I've ever felt compelled to pay for. This is really a sea change here. And like I said in a recent video, I don't know how LumaFusion is going to be able to keep up. I just ran in just a couple of days ago to a problem with LumaFusion where my footage from my hard drive wasn't connected and I couldn't reconnect it. And I've probably lost several hours worth of work because it just, it's not working and I can't do anything to make my footage show back up again. So I'm going to have to start over again. And since I have to start over again on that video, I'm probably going to just start it here in DaVinci Resolve and use kind of the same program that I've known and loved on the desktop, although with less features, obviously. But I think it's going to be really awesome to have this here and available. I'm going to do another video later about how this changes the iPad into something that really is a pro machine with these pro apps. But for right now, those are my initial thoughts on DaVinci Resolve for iPad. Go ahead, drop in the comments. Let me know, do you have an iPad that can run DaVinci Resolve? Have you tried it out yet? What do you think of it? And what do you think this means for the future of the iPad? Now, don't forget that I have courses on a lot of creative programs that are linked down in the description below, including Affinity Publisher for iPad, which just came out. Now, of course, I don't have anything for DaVinci Resolve on iPad yet, but I will be trying to get that out soon. Right now, I'm working on the Affinity Designer for iPad course for version two. So as soon as I get that out, then I can start thinking about what the next course is going to be. And so that will either be probably Affinity Photo or DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So let me know in the comments which of those you're most looking forward to. We'll chat in the comments and I will catch you in the next video.